Chase Lee Hockey, Blue Food Tone, we're going back in the world of movies at the theater because I still have seven more to do. So this shirt, seven times. I saw one movie today, but we're going back in the past with Midsommar. Yeah, it's the one that guy that directed Hereditary. And so Midsommar, what did I think? Let's roll that intro first. All right, Hereditary, what's it about? It's pretty simple. These four college kids go to Sweden, this festival, this festival, what it seems. I mean, that's really what we really need to know from the trailer is just craziness at this festival. And this girl, the main character, Florence Pugh, had a very bad incident. And now she's going to Sweden. So that's the good about this movie. This movie, I've been hearing a lot of critics and, you know, user reviewers and online reviewers saying the first 20, 30 minutes really had nothing to do with the story or how it's set up and how it's very different. I thought the first 30 minutes were the best 30 minutes of this movie. Why do I say that? It's graphic. It sucks you in. You're intrigued and you're just like, it's an oh my God factor. It was like, oh my God, like this 30 minutes, like when flaws were happening at the last two hours of the movie i remember the first 30 minutes cause this is a long movie but the first 30 minutes like i said it's graphic it pulls you in it's gritty it's messed up on all levels and you're just like oh god like i could see why this person is grieving and why this person is grieving the way she's grieving of course so you have the three college friends the boyfriend the one that's really into sweden actually there's five sorry the person from the village and then the kind of comic relief of the movie. Well, it is a very slow burn. Of course, there's other people from, I think, England that show up to this Swedish town. And all of a sudden, two people basically kill themselves. You kind of tough in the show like, where she's like, oh. well, that's something that's pretty graphic. Everyone in the theater's like, oh, my God. And the guy that does it the second time, you're like, oh, man. But then it's, again, it's a slow burn. They do it on purpose. And then the last 30, 40 minutes, it goes off the railing, Geo. Like, there's graphic imagery graphic sex graphic sex and graphic sex oh my god i had a burp there but let's go with the graphic imagery sometimes you'll see like a storytelling of like painted and you'll just see like naked women like completely spread and you're just like okay that's kind of awkward yeah i wouldn't want to see this with my mom at all and then there is a lot of full frontal nudity on both ends old women naked young women naked dudes naked you know jack renner from Transformers. Yeah, he's a uh, full frontal running around just penis out and all. Penis out and all running through the village. Like, rah, rah. But yeah, that sex scene. I'm bur- I'm coming back to that sex scene. Because that sex scene is probably the most graphic I've seen in a movie theater. Just because... Uh, I mean, it's... Mm, it's, yeah. It's, it's out there. That's all I can say. It's out there. This movie's out there. It's pretentious. And I think that's the biggest flaw of the movie. It's the pretentiousness of how it's filmed and what they want the audience to think and how the director wants the audience to think what he is thinking. Is that the definition of pretentious? I don't know. It just feels pretentious and I felt like that word was the right word to use. But when I say that, so this lady is grieving throughout the whole movie because of something happened in her past and very recently. And these townspeople are basically the whole reason why they're bringing these people there is they kind of indoctrinate them into this town and try to, you know, be one family so if you one person grieves you all grieve together if one person's happy you're all happy together and i completely hated that message of this movie because what she went through and all of a sudden like florence Pugh in the movie she'll start crying and a bunch of uh ladies around her will start crying too and the more she cries the more they cried and so they're like they're grieving as a family and sorry my neck got stiff for a second but, yeah, I, I, to me, that's not how you grieve for someone, by grieving with them, not knowing what they're actually going through. and it just, just I, I hated that message so bad in that mo- this movie, and it tanked this movie as a whole. Like, I had a high going in, some of the deaths, where I thought there was going to be more deaths and more gore in this movie for some reason, but it wasn't that bad. But the ending of the sex scene, the message behind the grieving factor, the happiness factor, how they're all a family. And just the very end of just how it concluded 
I, I wasn't happy. I, I mean, I left the theater like, okay, maybe it's one of those movies we think about. Well, I've been thinking about it for two and a half, three months now, and I still hate the ending. I still hate the message of this movie. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. So, Midsommar will receive a two and a half out of five of futons. It goes at 50%. So see the critics news scores gave this film. So you have the critics at 83% with 322 of them. And the audience at 63% with 5,173. And here's critic consensus. Ambitiously, impressively crafted, and above all unsettling, Midsommar further proves that director-writer Ari Aster is a horror amateur to be reckoned with. I'm going to have to disagree. Everyone's like, oh my god, there's no books in the frame. Let's get you out of it. <laughs> Just like the wires from the last one. You're probably thinking, why a 50? Why did I give it a 50? Because how I was saying it, it was like a lot worse than what I was saying. But it still looked good. It was fantastic. Look at it. There was some great humor in this movie. I liked all the characters in this movie. It, I, I liked the characters. It was just the outcome of what happens to these characters. I was, I mean, yeah, I knew someone was going to die, and that doesn't bother me. But what bothers me is some of the incest stuff. And it's the whole grieving factor of the movie of like, you don't grieve with someone by assuming you know why they're crying and be a family. So if I'm crying hard because something bad happened to my family, I don't want people crying for me. I don't. I don't want these random ass people from another country to be like, oh, I feel so sorry. But do you really feel sorry for me? I think that's where I get frustrated about. Also in the, like the you know actor world of like thousands of people went to Michael Jackson's funeral, the hospital. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. He was an icon for you, but he didn't know you. So, like, I'm sorry for your loss. Or like, all these people online are like, oh, my God, I'm so sad this actor died or this singer died or Mac Miller died. Bitch, you didn't know him. They didn't know you. Their family doesn't feel sorry for you. Why, why do you feel sorry for this person overdosing on drugs or doing shit like that? Like, I don't know. That, that's just me. But do you agree with the 83%, the 63%, or the 50%? Chase like the blue futon. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think of this blue futon topia, you blue Tonians. Thank for watching. Have a great day. And this shirt is comfy. Ralph Warren, the teddy bear with the flag. You always got to go to the USA of flags. Woo! But one of seven. Let's keep going, yo.